Welcome. Welcome. We're here sharing the word today, and it's actually the feast day of St. Andrew this November 30th. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to take an opportunity to invite you to take some time, because when you go to church today, the readings are going to be slightly different. And I really would like you to take an opportunity to look at Isaiah, the prophet, um, so you can keep connected with the Advent season. And Isaiah's reading that you need to look at when you have time today is chapter 25, verses 6 to 10, because this will move directly from yesterday's reading that you heard at Mass. And in this middle of the Advent first week, uh, you'll find that Isaiah um, is our Advent guide. And this remarkable individual spoke um, for God during the last half of the 8th century BC. And it was a critical time when the northern kingdom fell to Assyria and the little south kingdom desperately needed religious guidance. And so you'll notice that the reference to the Messianic banquet in the opening um, prayer when you read that too um, and in both scripture readings is quite important for you um, to realize that it is um, something having to do with a messianic banquet. But before we can go on any further, we really have to take into consideration the day. And today is the Feast of St. Andrew. In the Gospel of John, we learn that Andrew was following John the Baptist when John um, pointed to Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, he says, so Andrew immediately went to his brother Simon and declared, We have found the Messiah. And according to uh, Pope Benedict XVI, Andrew was a man who was searching and he lived with his heart thrown open, awaiting the fulfillment of Isaiah's great hope. After the resurrection and the great um, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, at Pentecost, Andrew went to share the good news. Tradition has it that he preached in Greece and also dined in Pat, um, Mas, or no, Patras, Petras. Petras. And so hmm. um, the Eastern Church honors Andrew with the title uh, uh, which you would call First. He's called the First. And so uh, we must give thanks to the universal church at this time, which was the East and West together, by which then we celebrate, and still today we both celebrate, the wonderful gift of the Apostle St. Andrew. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so we may be for us a constant intercessor before you. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, Today, because it's the Feast of St. Andrew, we'll be looking at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So when Jesus called his first apostles, he started with a... Uh, really a quartet of Peter, James, um, Andrew, and John. And in fact, 
Andrew, was initially the leader who introduced Peter to Jesus. And we see this uh, quartet together in other parts of the gospel. Um, however, for some reactive, Andrew was no longer included in the privileged group. Only Peter, James, and John accompanied Jesus to the transfiguration on the top of the mount and the raising of the daughter of Jairus and the agony in the garden. The quartet became trio and Andrew was out. Although this was God's will, Andrew may have uh, struggled uh, with feeling excluded. God's will, Andrew may have struggled with feeling excluded, but we may have the same problem in beginning um, left out of some activity or actually some ministry or possibly the community at large. Or if this is God's will, we are tempted to feel jealous, uh, resentful, or even unforgiving, forgiving. So however, if you and I don't get upset about being left out of something, we will not be left out of the most important things such as God's grace, love, and eternal happiness. That's what we all look for um, in this kingdom that God himself has given us um, that has as its leader the person of Jesus Christ. And so um, we can't find ourselves or see ourselves as the odd man out. All of us have to see ourselves uh, as those who are joined to the person of Jesus um, in order to praise and give him thanks for all that he has done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this season is very important for us because it is a season that allows us to accept the person of Jesus, also to experience the person of Jesus as we move down life one with each other. Mm -hmm. So um, the gospel is urging us in Matthew um, to really look to the reality that Jesus was um, calling and he calls you just like he called uh, Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. We just have to keep our ears open and begin to listen. Well, you know, Father, I'm sure you've heard, like I have many times, when somebody will say, oh, I'm not holy enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. But here in this gospel, we see that Jesus chose four men, ordinary men, who were fishermen. They That's weren't right. you know, they weren't uh, scholars of the of the you know the Hebrew scriptures. They were fishermen. They were just ordinary men. And so, what do you say to somebody who says, "Oh, I'm not good enough. I, I can't do that. I'm not. I you know I'm not holy enough to do what you're asking me to do." Well, a lot of times I'll just say directly, "Who told you that?" Mm -hmm. Because that's not from God. Right. And so sometimes you have to clarify for people who are listening that what really is of God and what isn't of God. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that the majority of situations in all of our lives is that God himself has loved us from the beginning. Right. And he's calling us continually into his self, into his person, right. into his life. And he equips us with what we need, right? Yes. He gives us what we need. For Everything we need. Yeah. So. so be open and accept his presence in your life. Bye-bye. Goodbye.